Star Wars 7x7, episode 2977. We're going to be talking today about a story that came recommended by Tom Holler, who's an editor at Del Rey, thinking that this might be a story worth checking out prior to the release of the Andor series. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So it being Sunday, if you've been a long time listener to the podcast, you'll probably be aware that we often call it Spinner Sunday because we talk about either comics or comic arcs or short stories on this episode thinking of the spinner racks that they used to have comics on back in the day. And they still do in places, too. Places that are not primarily selling comics. But anyway. So, the story we're talking about is called Contingency Plan. It's written by Alexander Freed, and it's part of the collection of 40 stories that were written to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the original Star Wars, a.k.a. A New Hope. It's called From a Certain Point of View. You've probably heard us talk about it. You may have heard about it or even read it yourself. Now, Tom makes a point of saying that he doesn't know anything about the Andor series. He's not privy to insider knowledge or anything like that. So his recommendation is simply because there is a Mon Mothma story in from a certain point of view, and Mon Mothma is of course going to be a big focus of the Andor series. And it turns out that there are actually a couple of things that kind of bear on what we might see at some point in the Andor series. Maybe not necessarily during this first season, but for sure at some point there's going to be some reference to it, if not an actual depiction of a couple of these things. One of those things is something to do with Mon reflecting about her journey as this story goes on and she thinks about the first time that she met with Bale and the others, quote unquote. The others are not named, so <laughs> we'll have to explore who they might be in another episode. But Bale, of course, is Bale Organa. And as she's reflecting on this, she says that she was practically a child and she thought that they would overthrow the Emperor in a matter of months and not decades. So she's actually referring to stuff happening at the very start of the Empire. She's not necessarily talking about the start of this rebellion. However, it is still deeply tied to Bale. And so, no, they don't have anything organized by this point, but he is absolutely a crucial part of that conversation, which leads us back to the, are we going to see Bale and Brea Organa and even a young Leia in this series? It seems impossible to imagine that we wouldn't have them show up in here, at the very least Bale. And then there's a comparatively minor mention in Aid Cian, C-I-A-N-N-E, who, according to Mon, has been with her since the days when she first started moonlighting in treason. That's the phrase, moonlighting in treason. So that might be a person who shows up in this series, whoever Cian is, as an Aid to Mon Mothma, that might be an additional character. Now, since the story came out like five years ago, I think we can fairly say that it's okay for me to talk spoilers and whatnot about this story. So, the story has to do with Mon Mothma evacuating from the rebel base on Yavin 4. So, as we know, she was there during Rogue One, so right before the events of A New Hope. And we find out that she basically bailed out of there, no pun intended with Bail Organa, just before Leia got there from the Death Star with Han and Luke and Chewie and everybody, right? That they knew she was coming and that she had the Death Star plans, and so everybody said, yeah, let's get Mon Mothma out of here. The idea being that if the Empire was tracking her, if they had any idea that they would be coming to Yavin, like they were already expecting the worst from this situation. But she's not just evacuating, she's evacuating with the crown jewels of the rebellion, basically, which is kind of odd to think about considering <laughs> what's been happening in the real world. She has rebel cell information, she has safe house locations, she has coded contact frequencies, she has imperial documents, and she reflects that it's 20 years of work being put into a courier package. 
She also reflects that she hasn't slept in over three days, which would also then put her back into the Rogue One time frame. And there's a moment where she considers the possibility of waiting for Leia to arrive and then taking Leia with her because Leia is just a child, comparatively speaking, at least in Mon Mothma's mind, and Mon Mothma is actually 46 years old at the time of A New Hope. So Mon Mothma sees Leia as young and thinks that the galaxy has enough bitter old masterminds trying to shape the galaxy to their visions. That's the phrase, bitter old masterminds. And the phrase bitter old men is also used in reference in particular to the people who run the Empire and who built the Death Star. And I thought that actually kind of tied nicely to things that we were talking about over the course of the past week with interviews featuring Genevieve O'Reilly and Denise Goff and them talking about facing the patriarchy and the misogyny of the empire. So yeah, that fits right in with that. But the reason why this story is called Contingency Plan has to do with Mon Mothma thinking through the possibilities of what could happen, whether the you know, unlikely scenario happens that the rebels are able to defeat the Death Star, or if they're not able to, or if you know Yavin 4 is destroyed, if other people rise up and the Empire goes on to destroy, you know, a hundred more worlds, a thousand more worlds, what will she do? And she basically decides that, you know, it's one thing to be sending people into battle and she's gotten better at doing that over time and accepting what that means. And I think that's also going to be fascinating for the Andor series because we're going to see her move from that very pacifist place where she was at at the fall of the Empire and see where she gets to the place where she's more militarily minded, even though it goes against her natural leanings. But she ultimately draws the line at the destruction of planets, and that's just something that she cannot abide. So out of all the scenarios, when they depart from Yavin 4, she tells her aide Cian and the pilot, and the pilot is not named, and I feel like there's something going on there because there's also faded pastel paint and Mon Mothma can't read the alien alphabet on the outside of this ship, but yeah, what is this ship and who's flying it? I, I feel like there is some sort of Star Wars Rebels connection here that I'm missing somehow. But anyway, she tells them to fly her to Coruscant. And her plan is to offer the Rebellion's surrender to Palpatine. So she's operating under the presumption that Things are going to go badly with this space station battle and Yavin 4 is going to get destroyed. The rebellion is going to get destroyed. They're going to set this thing loose. And so to prevent more worlds from being destroyed by the Death Star, Mon Mothma is going to Coruscant to surrender to Palpatine. And it's only when they finally call Yavin 4 and get word back that they did destroy the Death Star that she says, okay, never mind. Don't go to Coruscant. We're getting out of here. And in the meantime, she was actually taking all the data pads out of the courier package case and stuffing them in the shuttle. So even if she surrendered the rebellion to Palpatine, she was still leaving information for people to take on the fight if they decided to do so. So there you go. That is Contingency Plan. That's Alexander Freed's contribution to the 40th anniversary collection of short stories celebrating the release of A New Hope. And yes, it does seem like it has some bearing on the version of Mon Mothma that we are going to meet during the Andor series. So thanks to Del Rey editor Tom Holler for recommending that story to check out. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and/or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited. Other respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.